Hi friends, it's Susan from Elopine. Today we're going to show you how we build this wooden bench with a cherry finish. We built it for our living room and we absolutely loved how it turned out. We are super excited to share this project with you all, so let's get started. As the first step, we made the leg pieces for the bench using 2 by 12 boards. Since the leg was 17 and a quarter inch in width, we had to join two pieces from the 2x12 board to get it to that size. The two pieces were joined using a dowel joint to make the leg piece a final size. You can check out the exact measurements on our blog Mellowpine by clicking on the link in the description box below. We ran the pieces quickly through the planer to remove the minor imperfections. If you don't have a planer, know that this step is not necessary if you start out with reasonably good lumber. As the next step, we had to join the board pieces together to make one single board piece of size 1.5 inch by 18 inch by 17 and a quarter inch. For making the dowel holes, we used a drill with dowel jig and then joined it using dowel pins. We used a drill sander for aligning the two pieces because without a drill sander, the dowel holes may not align. So after placing the drill sander punch in the dowel hole, we aligned the two boards using a speed square and tapped on one end for the sander punch to make a mark on the other board. This marked location is where we need to drill the complementary dowel hole. So we used the dowel jig again and drilled holes in the other board too. Since the dowel pins were 1.5 inch in length, we set the drill stop such that we drilled 3 quarter inch deep holes in each board. As the next step, we filled wood glue in each of the dowel holes. We applied glue on the edge of the boards as well for extra strength. Then we tapped in the dowels using a mallet. We used 3 by 8 by 1.5 inch dowel pins for this project. We repeated the same step for the other leg piece as well. We then clamped the boards together and left it to dry for a day. Actually, we just did it to reduce the number of clamps used. The two legs are just kept next to each other, they are not glued together. Make sure you wipe out the excess glue to prevent issues while staining the project. We came the next day and unclamped the leg pieces. We then scraped out the glue marks using a chisel. Now that the leg pieces were ready, it was time to mark the center of the piece for cutting out the circular hole in it. To cut the circle, we used a router with a simple custom jig. We made the custom jig using an aluminum sheet for constraining the movement of the router in a circle. Then we cut out the circle as per the plan on the leg piece. A router is a much better choice here than a jigsaw because a jigsaw may not give a perfect circle. But if you don't have a router or don't want to use one, it's fine to just use a jigsaw. As you can see, we fixed a temporary screw into the jig to keep it pivoted at a point. We made multiple passes of 1 quarter inch depth each. You don't want your router wheel to break, so the general rule of thumb is depth in each pass should be less than half the router bit diameter. If you don't want to make a jig, there are router circle jigs available to buy on Amazon. Now it was time to make the support piece for each leg. For this, we took a 2x4 lumber. We need two such pieces of 14 and a quarter inch length for the support pieces. We had to make a box joint on the support piece for inserting the slat pieces into the slots in the box joint. Here we are marking the lines for making the box joint. We needed to cut out every alternate segment in this piece to make the box joint. We marked uniform lines with an equal spacing of 3 quarter inch. If this sounds confusing, you can check out the plan for this project on our blog Mellowpine by clicking on the link below this video. After we marked the slots, we made the cuts using the table saw for both the support piece and the legs. We first adjusted the blade height of the table saw as per the plan. As you might have noticed, we don't have the riving knife fixed. Ours was misaligned when we did the project and we had to take it out. So at this point, we had made the cuts for the box joint on both the leg pieces and the two support pieces. Now we had to cut out every alternate segment using a jigsaw. So we drew a line to mark the boundary while cutting with the jigsaw. When cutting using the jigsaw, you can get most of the wood out except the corners. So we need to do a bit of chiseling to get out that last bit in the corners. So there you have both the legs and the support pieces with the box joints made. But we made a mistake with the length of the support piece. We matched the length of the support piece with the leg. 
but you don't really want that because you want the support piece to be hidden under the bench rather than be on display. So we cut off the excess on the miter saw to bring the length to 14 and a quarter inches. Basically, one tooth on each side is to be cut off. As the next step, we sanded all the wood thoroughly in incremental steps from 80 grit to 220 grit to prepare for staining. You need a bit of hand sanding to smooth out the inside of the leg. After that, we had to fix the support piece to the leg. So we drilled the pilot holes in the support piece and countersinked every pilot hole. After this, we used screws and wood glue to join the support piece to the leg piece such that the slots in the support piece and the legs were aligned. We used 2.5-inch screws to fix the support piece to the leg. Next, we decided to stain the leg pieces. We used Varathane Cherry Gel Stain to do the staining. To get better results than ours, use a pre-stain conditioner. Do the staining along the grain and clean with a tack cloth before doing the staining. Whichever way you go, edge grains tend to take more stain than the face, making it slightly darker than the rest. As the next step, we made the top slats of the bench. We used 1x3 lumber for the slats and each slat was cut to a length of 48 inches as per the plan. We made 12 equal slats for the bench using the miter saw. After this, we planed all the slats using the planer. This is not necessary if your 1x3 pieces are plain when bought. Then we went ahead and sanded all the pieces thoroughly. We sanded progressively from 120 grit to 180 grit and then up to 220 grit. Sanding well is really important for getting a fine finish. Now it was time to stain the slats of the wooden bench. We used Varathane Cherry Gel Stain to do the staining. There were imperfections in the staining, but we can call that a feature. We then moved on to fixing the slats inside the box joint in the legs. We had to mark the location of the leg on the slat. We marked it such that the leg was placed one and a half feet from the edge of the slat. At this point, we tried to dry fit and everything fit together nicely. The next part was fixing the two end slats on each side. There is no box joint to place the slats in, so we had to screw those pieces to the legs. In hindsight, it would have been better to just glue those pieces to the legs and clamp them, to avoid the screw marks. So we drilled pilot holes, countersinked them, and applied glue on the slats before screwing it to the leg. We had to make the top of the leg level with the support piece. So we sanded thoroughly and applied wood filler to level better. Then we sanded the end grain to double the grid of the rest of the wood to make the staining uniform. We then stained the remaining parts again with cherry stain. We applied a water-based PU to seal the stain. Remember to use at least two coats for a good finish. So with that, our wooden bench is now ready. It was a great build and we love the final product. If you try this build, do send me the pictures and I assure you I'll feature it on Mellow Pine. Let me know if you would like more projects like this in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon below. We'll be back with another project soon. Until then, happy DIYing!